Our last project on Miniature Mashup was a kit bash of a thrift store toy with a couple of Dungeons and Laser floor plates on top. I've also made a couple other pieces of terrain using the Dungeons and Laser sci-fi stuff. They're modular and they work in perfect conjunction with that other project. Making them was an interesting process and I thought I'd share it with you. I'm not sure how to make this opening funny, so uh, duty booger go! Uh. Like I said on that other project, I've got a lot of Dungeons & Lasers terrain stuff that they sent for me. It's modular gaming terrain, you know, for D&D and such. I don't really have a use for it as that, but I do like making terrain pieces from them. Now since they're going to be permanent terrain and I'm not going to use the sliding adjustable floor tile bits, that means I need to cut the tabs off of the bottom of these. That also means I get to use the floor pieces as wall pieces, which I'll be doing later. I've probably made a hundred videos with two-part epoxy, and in that time I don't think I've ever expressed how much I hate the smell of it. It's really unlike anything else. I can't compare it to anything real. To me, it just smells like a replicant cat from Blade Runner vomited. It's just the perfect marriage of burnt plastic and a hairball. And this project is full of it, so happy nostrils to me. Because I'm using an out-of-date two-part epoxy, which takes a while to set up, and because I have a couple of flesh-and-blood tuna heads who love nothing so much as playing in my workspace, I'm going to build a cardboard framework to support this model while the epoxy cures, just in case someone messes with it while I'm sleeping. Nothing sets up faster than hot glue and cardboard strong enough to hold this plastic, so we're just going to go with some scrap cardboard and hot glue. I'm just going to trace out the wall lengths and the widths on this cardboard with the Sharpie. I've got to cut everything a little long. I can always trim it down later. I'm just slapping it together with my little hot glue gun. Just going to snip this. I learned this move in rabbinical school. You're probably looking at my wrist wondering if that's monkey pox. No, it's not. Nobody's getting skin to skin with my Stay Puft Marshmallow mass. Those are fire ant bites. I was climbing a hill in my yard and stupidly put my hand in a mound and they got me. They are all over North Carolina this year. The change in the weather patterns here has caused an explosion in their population. So if you're someone like me who likes to pick through garbage that's left on the side of the road to get little greebly bits for their terrain, you get a bite here and there. They're really not all that painful. They're just itchy and they stick around way too long. I'm just rubbing that two-part epoxy along the joints of our Dungeons & Lasers sci-fi terrain. It sets up real slow, so there's a real casual pace to this. I'm just smearing a nice even layer with the toothpick, and then I join them up, line them up the way I want them. With the cardboard inside, I'm sure to get a nice square fit. This piece is a bridge for a very different scale of toy train, but it's going to make a great railing for our structure. I'm cutting our little toy bridge with my cutting tool on my Dremel attachment. It eats through it like a hot knife through butter. It does leave some plastic shreds behind. I'll take those off with a modeling file. While I got you here, let me show you how I refurbished this toy satellite dish using hot glue and an old plastic gift card. I got this little toy for a quarter and I saw it and I knew I could use it somewhere on terrain or a makeshift vehicle and I knew I could patch it up and make it usable. And I ended up using this satellite dish on our last project. It worked perfectly for it. Remember that stud I cut off that wall piece? Well, here it is in the center of my satellite dish. For the floor, I'm cutting a square out of a big plastic kitty litter jug. I've got the whole thing upside down right now, and I'm just rubbing that same two-part epoxy with that same toothpick all along the bottom, getting a nice even coat, and then I'll just flip it on top of our green plastic jug slice. The last section of wall I put up is a short section of wall and a section with a door cut out. Getting them lined up requires a little bit of finagling, but nothing too tricky. Just gonna lock the whole thing down with some weight overnight. The extra weight has caused some epoxy to squeeze out of the wall joints here. I'm just gonna clean that up with a toothpick. I'm leaving the door open just so it has a little more playability. You could certainly cut up a piece of plastic card or something and simulate there being an actual door in the door frame, but I think it's fine as is. 
If the door is open, you can get a model in there and he can get cover from the doorway. If it's closed, it just becomes a block. It just makes this whole structure something that blocks line of sight and it's not as interesting to me. Inside the door, I'm going to glue down a 3D print plate cast off. And when you look inside the door, I want you to see something more than what this model is sitting on. I believe this misprinted gun turret was sent to me by the folks over at Creatures Caverns and Casting, the YouTube channel. Uh, if it was someone else, go ahead and shout yourself out in the comments. I'm fixing the gun portion with a little bit of plastic tubing. Don't ask where that came from, I honestly don't know. Little bits of plastic like this are everywhere, and I always make sure to grab them, and then I throw them in a box under my work table. So when the time comes, a social worker can call me a hoarder. Lucky for you, she can't tell me how to live my life. At this point, with all four walls put on, this structure is rock solid. Because it was put together with two-part epoxy, it's almost as if it were one solid piece of plastic, and it feels very good. I'm confident it can stand up to quite a bit of rough play. Once again, before we put the roof on, just some more footage of me smearing stinky two-part epoxy all over the wall here. I'll be adding our train bridge railing first to the sides and then the roof right in between. And lastly, a 3D printed turret is going to go on top of that roof. The roof of this project is a filter of some kind, I believe from an air conditioner. It has a nice machined look. It already looks pretty good just with the roof and the railing, but I really want to incorporate this turret gun thing into something and I can't think of a better project than this for it. I'm going to take this outside and prime it in black. Then I'm going to dry brush some cheap silver paint all over it with a large makeup brush. I'm going to throw a little brown in here and there and dry brush some copper to imply age and maybe some areas that are hotter. And when I say cheap paint, I just mean the craft barrel 50 cent stuff you get at the Walmart is fine for a project like this. There are really two kinds of terrain YouTubers, folks who are working at a really high end and then folks like me who are just doing sort of trash builds, slapping together stuff that's quick and easy from things that are affordable and available. And, you know, in this case, sort of miscast 3D prints, a couple of terrain sets and some toys from the thrift store plus some scrap plastic here and there. This is about doing something quickly and simply. I could certainly elevate this by painting different panels different colors on here. The sci-fi train set shows painted examples that are far more intricate and if you guys watch this channel you know that I can paint to a higher standard than this but this is just a piece of terrain and it's gonna get handled a lot and I don't really need it to detract from the miniatures that are being played with around it. I just want to slap something together quickly and easily. It's kind of what we do here and I hope you guys understand that you can take this project much further than I am but I'm pretty happy with the result. Once the gun's on top, the whole thing does give off the impression of some kind of archaic, unesthetic tank. Like I could just drop this onto some tank treads and I'd have sort of a strange little vehicle. The upshot of that is, of course, that I can drop this onto any larger structure, as long as it's got a flat roof, and this gun turret will just sort of incorporate itself, like you saw in the opening images where I put this on top of my LOL surprise toy structure. I'm going to use this stencil to put some numbers on the side here. I haven't made a ton of use of this stencil. I think I've done similar projects like this. It's for vehicles and structures and stuff. The end product comes out okay. I haven't had a ton of practice using it, so I'm sure it can be used to greater effect. I'm sure I picked this up for next to nothing at a thrift store. Content creators who make a lot more money on this site than I do will tell you that this type of packing Skyrofoam has no value for crafting. I strongly disagree. The core of this project is, in fact, a packing Styrofoam. Lots of two-part epoxy going onto both the floor plates and the foam. I'm just going to cover most of this block with short walls and floor plates. It's going to make it look a little bit like a cargo container, something you'd see on the back of a semi or on a train. The white bubbled packing styrofoam block that's at the center of this, I didn't need to cut it, but you certainly could cut one of these exact dimensions from a larger piece. If that's what you have on hand, I have quite a bit of this type of foam on hand now because I always collect more than I use, unfortunately. What's nice about having this at the core of this project is it reinforces it. It's got a uh, something in the center that just stops these four walls from collapsing. I could have set this up the way I did that last project by simply building a structure 
inside made of cardboard, but this goes together faster. I don't want, I don't need to build the structure, and I don't need for things to dry either. I can just adhere them right onto the styrofoam. The styrofoam doesn't really have any weight, so the finished product ends up being very light, even though it is kind of a solid, not hollow project. The top of this is going to be assorted plastic bits that come from toys and some electronics. There's a fruit squeezins cap, and they look like air filters, or maybe something that would allow this container to connect to some other container. One, it allows me to use up these greebly bits I've held on to. Two, it lets me stretch the Dungeons and Laser sci-fi terrain a little bit further. I do have a whole box of it, but I'd like to make as many pieces as possible from it. The best piece is going to be a tank from a much smaller scale truck, but it looks pretty good to me. The tank doesn't quite fit on this as is, I've got to trim the base down a bit to get it on there. And it's certainly more interesting to have one side of this container look different from the other sides, no? So for the paint job on the water tank section, what I did is I primed the whole thing in, well I can't say really primed, I sprayed it down with a silver spray paint. And then I filthied it up. I'm not sure I'd go this route again. Much like my life, casual observation reveals this plastic tank to be completely hollow. So I'll be using my little hot glue gun to put some additional greebling on the top of it. And we're coming up to the end of this project, guys. As always, please like, subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss future episodes. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider donating to my GoFundMe campaign that's in the description below. I also have an eBay store there where I sell miniatures, graphic novels, all kinds of nerdy stuff. We've got a Facebook page where you can see photos of this project or projects from the past. All of that's in the description below, and as always, thank you for watching. Please come back soon.